What's up guys? Chilling here with Bob. But anyway, uh, we're gonna do a little mashup today at Olympus Sports Coliseum with Lawrence to go, aka ready to go on Instagram, Titanium Fitness, Tyler Yusuda, Titanium Fitness on Instagram. I don't know who else is gonna be there. My girlfriend Donna will be there. Someone asked if she's my girlfriend. Yes, she's my girlfriend. We've been together for three years now. A very happy, successful three years. Anyway, this is how things are looking right now. <sighs> Going to do some leg compound work today. And this is pretty much, um, this is gonna be a rough setup of what my leg compound and main arm day is gonna be. Because like I said, I'm gonna dedicate a full day to arms. I'm probably gonna start with triceps. Ooh, wow, darkness. There we go. I'm probably gonna start with triceps because obviously my triceps are weaker than go to biceps. Legs going before all of this. I'm gonna do some mobility, which I'm gonna show you guys. And yeah, next time you see me, I'm gonna be cleaner cut because I'm gonna get a haircut. Receding hairline, AKA the LeBron hairline, but I'll be talking to you all soon. What's up guys? So I've changed my mind. I'm not going to squat today. I thought I was going to squat and do snatch deads, but on the drive over I was actually figuring out there's a better way I can set this up. So it's going to be fun. Uh, I'm going to be doing arms. There's a little Asian guy behind me. Um, I'm going to be doing... Disrespect! Yes. I'm going to be doing arms and probably I'm going to be doing some leg accessories, so leg press, GHRs for very high reps, but mainly it's going to be arms starting with triceps. Anyway, this is pretty much a meetup. There's a girl named Joey. What's your name, bro? I forgot, I don't know. Tony. I've never met you before. Tony? Yeah. Okay, there's Tony. <laughs> there's Tyler with his big ol' ass. <laughs> Anthony is back here, okay. We've got Monique, Oja Monique, on Instagram. And then we've got Lawrence doing some seal rolls over here. And we've got Tyler pulling some Inception on me. Wait, you gotta spin, do the spin a lot. Do the spin? Oh shit, wrong way. <laughs> Here's Lawrence. Oh. Okay. Oh. oh. Look at that lens. Yeah. And then Alan's over there, but Donna is not here right now. She'll be here soon. Anyway, I'm rambling. I'm rambling. So. I mean, it could be worse. I'll explain what I'm doing now. It's a band of distraction. Um, the band is pretty much up here, okay? And then what I do is my foot, which is right here. I imagine that I'm, oh, I, I do create torque, so I spread the floor, and the knee comes out. What happens here is that the femur, okay, is brought back, or the head of the femur is brought back to the back of the hip castle. And if you hold this, if you do this maybe two to three times a week, and you mobilize this position for two to three minutes, um, you will end up, over time, having way more room in your hips. Um, when you're squatting or when you're deadlifting, or you'll be able to open up your hips a lot more. So, I wouldn't also suggest that you do this. Don't do this right before you squat. This should be a mobilization that you do on other days or maybe after you're done working out. I'm just doing this because I haven't done it in a while and I'm not squatting today, I'm leg pressing. So, it, it's just, it's not something that you want to do before a big compound movement. It will bring too much damage and the joint will be too sore. Okay? What I was just doing right there were band of distractions. I explained the first one. The second one, when I came backwards and I ended up in like a front kneeling position, 
uh, the band was resisting or bringing resistance pretty much oh, I'm too close it was pulling this way so the resistance was coming this way so with the last band of distraction the femur okay was being pushed to the back of the capsule with this distraction distraction <laughs> distraction it was being pulled forward to the front end of the hip capsule now when you're doing that, you want to make sure that you flex your glutes in whatever, with whatever foot the band is on, so that when your hips are brought to full extension, it allows more resistance to be brought to the band. Okay, so if you're like relaxed and your glutes are relaxed, um, there's not as much force being generated to bring your femur forward. And it's not like the femur really moves forward that much, but it does drive in that direction when enough resistance is being used. So you do want to use a really heavy fan band for both of these distractions. I keep saying distractions. Distractions. Okay, use a really heavy band for these distractions. And make sure also that you're not doing this right before you do heavy leg movements. Um, you should probably do these post-workout at least a lot heavier. And pre-workout, do lighter things like foam rolling um, with a hard foam roller maybe just whatever type of rolling movements you need to do. You can also use Mark Bell's hip circle. I'll show you how I use those when I leg press today. On another day, I'll show you when I use those when I squat. Um, but it does help to also get you used to opening up the hips. And it also gets you to utilize the cue of creating torque, which I will explain very soon. Let's explain this. See my feet, right? See my knees? Okay. I'm gonna to explain torque. Torque is gonna to come up a lot. Um, whenever you're doing like a squat or even a deadlift, you wanna create some aspect of torque. So when most people leg press, right? Just watch my feet. Okay, they come straight down. Okay, the knees come straight down. They come straight up. Something like that. I disagree. Okay. What I do, and the reason why the hip circle is very useful in warming up, is I spread the platform so I keep my feet where they are and I imagine that I'm spreading the platform. What happens with my knees when I do this is they start to come outward. So my feet haven't changed their place. I'm just spreading here and then my knees and the cordons come outwards here. So when I do actually want to do my leg press, right? You notice that my knees are coming outwards. Okay. End up in like an outward position and they're not just coming straight down on me like this. Okay, so I spread the platform. When I spread the platform, knees come out. Knees are coming out. Okay, I end up in a wider position at the bottom. So, why is this so important? So why is this important? When you're like pressing or you're squatting, right, and you're not creating torque, this is the hip capsule. This is the femur. When you're not creating torque, there's a lot of room in here. Okay, but when you spread the platform or when you spread the floor when you're squatting, this happens. So the joint pretty much locks into place. It's the same idea as when you're benching or you're doing any type of pushing movement and you were to break the bar. Same type of joint as your hips, it locks into place. So when you're doing this, spread the platform, knees come outwards, it comes straight down. Okay. <laughs> Don't do this. Don't do this. <laughs> do this. Guys, this is actually Kevin. He's so cute. And his girlfriend Monique. And then Jesus. Jesus is Kevin's cousin. Okay. He's cute as well. <laughs> and and he's cute as well. And then this is Monica. No, this is not Monica. 
I'm not sure how that works. Oh man! Really? I'm so sorry. Well, you know what? Actually, you do have you do have a pretty big ass. So. Quite a bit taller though. Yeah. And then this is Ryan and Leo. Ryan and Leo, what's up? This is Carl with a K. And that's Monica. Hi. Okay, that that's Carl. That's Monica. My bad. My bad. You guys do look kind of alike, like brother and sister. That's kind of nasty, isn't it? Hey, sister. I get you to some of the right cores in the cities, just like history and the technology. Now they're yours, how precious they can be. There's still something you can really see. There's always a big mess of water in the hall, and the chairs covered with a smoky bell. Love is something that makes you thrill. So, um, just finished all my Sis of Lake press. Like I said, you're gonna be with me through brainstorming all of this crap. What I think I'm going to do on this day is since I have such very limited tricep movements that I can handle, I'm going to do very high, high rep close grip bench presses. So that'll be programmed in my compounds. If you don't get what I said there, I'm going to explain it later when I show you how all my programming is set up. But I'm probably going to close grip bench press within the 10 to 12 rep range. And then I'm probably going to do five or so sets of very high rep tricep movements just because or tricep press downs just because like I said I'm limited with what my elbow can handle so very high rep close grip bench presses very high volume tricep press downs then I'm going to be doing biceps and then I'm going to be doing GHRs so the way I think this day is going to be set up is high rep leg press so high rep crowd work high rep GHRs high rep close grip bench press then I do my triceps before my biceps so that well, my triceps aren't as fatigued because they're my weakest muscle group, and then biceps after that. It sounds good to me. Ready? This dude's about to get. Some <laughs> this is a thought angle. Not twerk for us. <laughs> oh man, that's that's good. Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> So I probably only showed you one clip of triceps, but like I mentioned before, what I'm doing for triceps is close grip bench press, 10 to 12 reps, and then I'm going to do a one arm, um, I think I called that push down before, but I'm going to call it a pull down, uh, five sets of 12 to 15 reps actually. I may stick this in the 15 to 18 rep range. And then, so I do five sets of that, and then I'm going to do three sets or three different workouts for biceps. Um, first, the supinated bicep curl, so your typical standing bicep curl. I'll do that for three sets of eight to 12 reps. Then I'll do the incline bicep curl, maybe four sets of 12 to 15 reps. Then lastly, I'm going to do four to five sets of the seated concentration cable curls for sets of 15 to 18 reps. Um, I'm doing my triceps before my biceps, like I mentioned, because my triceps are weaker. Okay. Um, or my triceps are less developed, so I want to utilize more energy for those. And if I do biceps before triceps, my performance in terms of my triceps movements, my tricep movements would be hindered. Okay, cool. You might feel the sting of a bumblebee. You tried it before, but don't run on me no more. Because I'm real inside, you'll never feel this vibe. We never get it right, we ignore. But still, I try till the day I die to throw away my pride and be pure. But what I came here for is to relate to your divine force, the orator. So, something that I forget to do often, but it's probably something that you shouldn't forget to do, is when you're doing a bicep curl, let me oh, use this on. You're curling up, turn your wrist slightly at the top. I was, uh, when I was working out with Raymond over at campus, that's something I forgot to do, even though it's something that I usually do. And it's actually really important, you can feel the difference a lot. Second thing, don't forget to flex your butt. And I explained that in another reason why. It'll help you brace better. Let's get up, Tyler. Come on, up, up, up. Let's go, two more, two more. Up, get up. Lock out. Let's go, let's go. Up, up, up. Lock it out. There we go. 
story tells, so I hope we gel and you can send email, I'm on tour. The do's and don'ts, the wills and wants. It's been a while since I've done incline bicep curls. Um, I think I had the bench angle a little bit too low. I didn't feel it as well as I wanted to, so I raised it slightly. I'd say it's around 60 to 70 degrees. 60 degrees. Um, I'm also going to increase the weight I'm doing. Uh, and yeah, I'm gonna keep these between 12 and 15 reps. Feels at once. Everyone you know is a star in somebody's eyes Not who you seen from afar Too many drinks at the bar Got us dying inside Trying to find escape Many times a day I just ride So let's talk about performance real quick I'm not sure if I'm going to have this in the video But I might um, My macro tracking has really been all over the place It's my show uh, I haven't really wanted to track yet um, Until I actually got my program set up Which is going to be very soon But because of this My energy expenditure has been all over the place So this is why it's really important for you guys That even if you're strength athletes or if you actually really do want to progress, it's extremely important to track your macros and have a certain amount of intake that you have per day so that, for example, if you're not tracking and your performance starts to dip and you don't know where your food intake has been, it could potentially be because your mechanics on your lifts are bad or, or maybe your progression isn't the greatest or it could just be you haven't eaten as much as you do. And actually these past few days, I haven't been eating as much as I usually do in terms of total calories. So I'm feeling kind of weak today, but that's my own fault. So message to you, track your macros, try to have a benchmark in terms of your protein, carbs, and fat. If you even want to loosely track so you can know your pulse sales numbers, do that. Um, but make sure you have a minimum intake that you need to have per day so that your performance doesn't dip like mine is right now. And that last set felt a lot better. Increased the seat angle, worked better for me. The way, when depression sets in, I stress my best friends, though I'm the blame. Because I know inside I gotta focus my ability so I can make change. Now it's no denying me, soldier, I'ma just hold the line and take aim. With my goals in mind, I put in overtime, it's no game to find with no pain. I'm digging this setup a lot. Um, I'm digging this arm day setup a lot. I'm going to attempt and see if I can do some chin-ups at the very end, weighted chin-ups. I think my arms are gonna be too fatigued for that, so let's try it out. Um, if it goes well, I'll see how many sets I can do with that. If it doesn't, we're gonna get some pictures, and then we're gonna go eat some food. The do's and don'ts, the wheels and wants. The do's and don'ts, the wheels and wants. Got him? Explain yourself. These are black people problems. Hashtag black people problems. You got ashy knees. See, everything else is nice, but I forgot to get my knees. I might have ashy elbows. This is another area that we need it's to It's not so bad. No? <laughs> but yeah, this and crack lips. My lips get dry really fast, so I look like Tyrone Biggs. <laughs> I'm serious, I look like Tyrone Biggs when my lips get cracked, but black people problems. It's round one. <laughs> Look at that pretty face. Have you guys actually realized how pretty Tyler is? That's true. I think like, he has a flawless day. face. Backup as a model. Seriously, you can do some stuff with that. You can make some money with that. Oh, yeah. Round two. Round three. Round four, I think. Yes, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think the reason it's worth too much food. That's the end of the video. This is Nsima the Centaur EA from Break the Bar. I'll talk to you all very soon. Mm, 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 mm.